Aloha everybody. Welcome to Iolani Center, right across the street from the amazing Ala Moana Shopping Center. We're going to go check out the new factory and showroom at Kuala Ukulele. Come on, join me. Let's go. Oh yeah, so what I do is, um, so I take all of our raw lumber and I turn that into parts of the ukulele. So, um, you know, when the tourists come through, it's not a very interesting area for the average person, but um, it is one of the most critical area, uh, or parts of the build. Yeah? And, and you always want to start with quality, right? So no matter you know, if you're making music, you're recording, if you want to play good music, um, the quality of the base material is really important. So basically what I do is I turn like this, which is a board of coal, into a smaller board of coal, <laughs> which you then cut into tiny thin pieces of coal. Uh, and so something like this would become a top or a back of the ukulele. Yeah? So after we cut and we sand and we get everything to a precise thickness, what we'll do is we'll book match it so that we have like a nice book match for a top or a back. So is this where you would grade the koa that you're going to use for? Yeah, so the, the grading, so the grading I actually do on the fly. So um, there's that big pile over there and believe it or not, this is actually just the leftover stuff. So, um, you know, the ukulele, so for me as a builder, to me the tone and the playability is the most important. But unfortunately, you know, humans, we judge everything with our eyes first, right? So the first thing is we do is, you know, if it's a piece of food, we look at it. If it looks appetizing, maybe we'll eat it, right? But you know, if it looks gross, like you, you don't even want to try it, right? So, um, you know, aside from, from the tonal and of course the structural aspects of choosing the wood, um, I also have to make sure it looks really nice because, you know, if the ukulele sounds great, plays great, structurally sound, but it just, it doesn't look appealing, nobody's gonna pick it up, play it. Yeah, so um, I do all of that grading here, um, and basically I take each board one at a time, um, and on the fly I'll grade it. So and if it's got a little bit of curl, I might set it aside for a custom or one of our special instruments. Um, and the more plain or kind of you know quote unquote boring grains would be for our production. And when you mean curl, you're talking about this sheen that you can almost see in this yeah, piece. So of it actually, looks like, right? um, and this yeah. piece isn't wet. It comes out a little bit more. I can't get this on wet, but. Yeah, so the curliness is it, it basically looks like tiger stripes or, or that, that cross grain pattern in the wood. So um, yeah, it looks really pretty and a lot of people like it. So I guess this would be what the tree would look like. Yeah, so the tree would start off like that. Um, I get it in, of course, pre-cut to one inch or two inch thick pieces. Uh, makes it a little bit more easy for me to process. So just out of curiosity, a board or plank that size originally, 
how many ukuleles would you be able to create from something like um, that? Um, so assuming that there were no defects and, and you know, no knots, no cracks, no bark, no, I mean, if it was a perfect piece of wood, I mean, I'd, out of this particular piece, maybe about six ukulele, oh, or six ukulele bodies, but um, the thing is I need to cut around, like, I don't know if you'll be able to see it too well, but so this piece actually has a bunch of knots in it. So there's a knot here, there's a knot here, there's a knot here, 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 here. Yeah, so um, I gotta cut around all of that stuff. So um, this piece will probably end up being maybe one ukulele if, if I can get usable um, material between all of the imperfections in the wood. I got a couple other, two quick questions. Yeah, okay. So you use this machine first, which is uh, joiner? Oh, yeah, it's a, a, a joiner, but it, it's basically the same thing, yeah. And a chop saw initially to yep. get the yep. size, and then I think, what is that, a band, yep. band so saw? So it's just a really, really big band saw, and what that guy does is he turns, uh, so this block, we would cut into six to seven uh, thin pieces of veneers, and basically that big band saw, or the process is called knee sawing, uh, but that's what turns it into these guys. Okay, so final question for you, Paul. How long does it take to turn a piece of wood like this through your production facility and output a uh, new ukulele at global? Okay, so yeah, if we, mm, it's about a week. Yeah, so a week from you know absolutely raw, un, unselected, undimensioned you know slab of core. Um, as it comes through the milling, gets processed into finished ukulele parts, gets assembled as a body, gets mated with the neck and put together, finished, sanded, um, sprayed, buffed, and then strung. So it's, it's about a week or so. So how many steps are there? Ah, so I actually documented it, counted one time. And for the smallest soprano size, for the way that we build, there's actually 300 different things that we need to do. So not necessarily 300 individual steps, but there's 300 things that need to happen to put together the smallest soprano ukulele, wow. so uh, it's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of work. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and then, how many people generally are involved in that whole process, from where you are working right now to its completion? Ah, uh, so we have a guy in each major section, um, and so milling would be one. Um, I'm usually here. Uh, bodies, which is right on the other side, so that's another major section. Uh, there's the assembly. There's the spray uh, stringing, and then also kind of in between there, there's the guys who do our prep work. So uh, that would be kind of like a six section, yeah. Oh, actually buffing too, so. Yeah, so it's about seven different areas or sections that the ukulele or the wood would need to pass through to become a, a finished product. Thank you for sharing this uh, process with us. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, we're gonna go, I guess, take a walk around the rest of the facility. Yeah, uh, appreciate hey, you. You wanna, um, you wanna see something cool? Absolutely. Okay. What you got? This is the ukulele that we just finished. That is fantastic. Um, so as you can see, it's oh. a very shark teeth based uh, build here. Yeah, but I uh, got a shark tooth rosette, and then there's a leo mano, which is the the Hawaiian War Club, um, with more shark teeth on the back. We got another shark tooth. And then we hit a little tiger shark at the top in the back. That's incredible. Yeah. So I noticed it has a black label yep. on the inside. Yeah. Which would um, indicate that it's a custom. Yeah. So right? we have our red labels and our black labels. Um, the red labels are semi custom line, and the black labels are full custom line. So uh, Grizz and I just finished this up. It's about to get strung up today, and hopefully it sounds good. And, and this is cool. Yeah, so this one a is a, it's a core top and back, and we did an ebony side with ebony binding, uh, full curfling on the front, back, and sides, uh, ebony fretboard. Uh, the body of the club is actually core as well. Um, and then this little tiny piece here where the wrap on the club is, so that's uh, another native wood called mamane, and the neck is mahogany, uh, ebony head plate, and a hand cut. So all of the pieces of shell on this ukulele were all hand cut in-house by Grizz and I. You know, that's incredible. I know a normal production tenor would run eleven to twelve hundred dollars in our store. Yet. What would a custom instrument like that run? Would you um, uh, just well, so guess? I mean, the base price of our black labels is four thousand, um, but this one obviously has a lot of detail in there, so uh, it would definitely be a bit more than that. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> and, and just one final question, what is this inlay made of? Uh, so the rosette is black mother of pearl, 
Uh, the teeth are all white mother of pearl, so the teeth on the, on the club as well. Uh, this tooth in the back is also white mother of pearl. And then the tiger shark is a combination of black mother of pearl and white mother of pearl. Um, but if you look closely, we actually angled the shell so that the tiger shark has like its little tiger stripes on it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh man, so how much, um, how much should we charge? <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, look at this thing. Wow. I do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff around here because we're a small family company, you know. So one person gotta do a lot of things. Uh, my main responsibility is, you know, like anything related to computer, you know, computer stuff. Um, I also take care of the social media, and when the production need help, you know, they short handed. I jump in and you know I help, you know, set up. Uh, I also coordinate with the Thailand factory. You know, when we bring in the OPO, you know, I take care of, you know, making sure that the quality from Thailand, you know, the OPO line is, you know, up to the standard. Now, yes. how is so this factory different than what you would consider a normal assembly line factory? Because it's handmade instruments. Yeah, it's pretty much, it's just like a mirror, you know, of our factory here. You know, it's, it's not just that we go to Thailand and then we build ukulele. We actually, you know, the, you know, the Okami family, the whole team, help us uh, build the, f the factory from the ground up. So all the jigs, mold, uh, machines, um, even the fret saw machine that Pop built, you know, there's only two fret saw machines in the world, one here in Hawaii and one in Thailand. So he built one specifically for Thailand just so that we can make it exactly the same thing like we are doing here in Hawaii. So how, how big is the facility compared kind of to here? About same, the same? About the same and it's same thing, <coughs> you know, family oriented kind of company. We have husband and wife, you know, working together in Thailand. A lot of them are brothers, cousins, just like what we are doing here. That's, I, I think it's is also contribute to the passion that go into it because when you work with the family right you care for each other and that also show in the product that we are making because we consider you know our customers you know our business partner also part of the family because we want, we don't want to you know like screw them up or anything like that we want to take care of them so everything that we do we, we take pride and we put a lot of passion in what we're doing. Yeah. And I think it's also important to know with the OPO line, right. it's also lifetime guarantee. It is the same warranty. Like lifetime here. guarantee. Yes. yes. Uh, and the fact that I'm being here working with the Okami family here in Hawaii, um, you can just rest assured that any problem, you can, you know, we're going to resolve it, we're going to fix it for you, we're going to replace it for you. So when you buy the OPO, it's almost, you know, like same quality, same product. As know? a ukulele player, I've been playing koala ukulele for right. about 13 years. Right. And when I play an opio ukulele for koaloha, to me it's indistinguishable as far as the <laughs> yeah. playability, you, right. the sound. I right. can't tell the difference I, I, in the sound. Like some people actually they, right, look at they, it. They, you got to look really close, you know, like through the sound hole, maybe you see that, oh, that's like made in Thailand, you know. If you close your eyes, you play it is almost in indistinguishable. So um, <clears throat> as far as the uh, production is con concerned, um, all, all the people that are working there right. were training and, right. and are, is, is it called Aloha Ukulele there? Yeah, we, uh, you know, when we started the company, you know, the factory in Thailand seven years ago, you know, all the people here that working here, they travel to Thailand and then each one of them spend like months over there just so that they can train the, you know, the Thai, Thai, Thai crews over there to like build exactly to the same So standard. like a hands-on mentorship. Yeah, so they actually, they all know each other. They spend time working together, you know. And we, you we go back on family. a regular basis right, as well. Right, I go back like every year just like to check on them. And I also have, you know, my partner, you know, Bert, he's running the factory. He's been friend with me since high school. I know him for like 20 something years. Years, so you know it, it's e easy to work with you know someone that you can trust and you know being a part of the family yeah so it is a, a line the appeal line is something that a lot of more people can afford right yet enjoy the same yeah, level right, right. because I know people like to have a ko aloha but sometimes they kind of on the budget so OPO can come in you know you if you want a beginner you know or even a professional you can pick up some OPO models uh, we have the spruce top you know that we don't even have it on, you know, here made in Hawaii. So there's some something different that you can only get from the OPO line. Yeah.
So, yeah. so if I travel to Thailand, I can go visit the factory? Yes, yeah, feel free to, you know, like yeah. contact me, contact us, and you say, well, we're going to Thailand, going to Bangkok, you like to visit the, you know, the opio factory, yeah, we, we show it for you, yeah. What is it called, the factory in Thailand? Um, we don't really have a name for it. <laughs> it's just is called. It we are actually or? the the only one ukulele manufacturer in Thailand. Believe it or not. Oh really? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you, you cannot really like, get lost or anything. If you're gonna go to Thailand, there's only one you know ukulele manufacturer. That's mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Koala How long has this factory been working seven operational? Seven years, I think. It's been seven years now. Yeah. We we've been through so many iterations. You know, we used to build with the uh, sepele. Now we change it up to acacia. Uh, we have a spruce top, so we, we plan to add a lot more. The the newest model is the six string, you know, the guitar lele, right? I, I don't know if you've seen that, but I can get one and show you, and you can play it just like a guitar, but smaller and, you know, in a tenor size. Yeah, so well, really it's nice. It's been a tremendous addition to the Koloha family, right. your team oh, from you Thailand, so and you as well. I just want to thank you so thank you much. Thank you so much. King. All right. And tell me your last name, Rawa. <laughs> you don't want to. It's not really a, a series of artists that we're kind of releasing, but um, we're working with an individual. The guy's from Romania, and this guy's got mad talent. He's a pyrographer. I never heard of this until like recently, but it's like pyrography, you know, pyrography, you know, and it's a, he actually uses a soldering pen to hand draw these images on, on anything, on wood, and that's what this is. I mean, they're not done by laser or anything like that. Wow. Um, we give them the unfinished ukulele. Um, you know, the lighter the koa that we use, the better the image kind of comes out. But then uh, we give him the unfinished instrument. And just on the surface of the Hawaiian koa, he's able to pretty much burn by hand these images that you see here. We have the onu. Uh, our showroom guy Lloyd, he wanted to do some kind of samurai theme, you know, so that's pretty cool. What's been really popular is the, the flowers, you know, fl uh, plumerias, the hibiscus. Um, so really nice, you know, it's uh, something different that we kind of offer our customers. I think, I think where this gentleman um, really shines is um, portraits, you know, because he, he did all these kind of, these, he gifted us with these kind of things, like with uh, pops and Alan and Paul, and he's really great with portraits. This is all by hand. All by hand. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I could have sworn it was a machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, a lot that, of people that, think. That yeah. Fantastic. Tell you the truth, I thought it was too. I, I thought this guy was wasn't for real, but I've I've seen his work. He does amazing work. There's a specific sound mm -hmm. that is associated with koaloha ukulele. Mm -hmm. There's a projection of resonance a sort of sustain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it has something to do with their internal oh, definitely. bridge work and the way it interacts with the sound oh board. definitely and it's very unique definitely. to your instruments that, that you have in every line can you talk a little bit about yeah how sure. you came up with that and and maybe how that works because okay. i know they're very strong instruments as well yeah exactly uh koaloha basically my goal from the onset in 1995, I, ha I have a kamaka which my wife bought for me, which I loved, you know. And then my goal was to be able to duplicate and match the kamaka sound, you know, and I'd be happy. But being the way I am, if I matched the sound, I certainly would want to try to see if I could surpass it a bit, you know. And so that was my, my drive and all this. And as a musician, folks, I'm not an ukulele maker by trade. By education, I'm a professional 
musician, an oboe player. I played with the Honolulu Symphony. I played with the world famous Royal Hawaiian Band for 10 years as the principal. My title was musician, first chair, solo oboist. So, uh, you know, music, in a sense, I come from a background of music. And so, the actually, this is a super secret that I'm about to reveal because um, when I played the oboe, the most important part of playing the oboe for an oboist is to be able to make your own reed. The oboe is a double reed instrument like the bassoon and the oboe. The saxophone clarinet, it's a single reed and it just vibrates. The oboe reed presents such a challenge because you have a reed here and a reed on the bottom and what you need to do is you need to scrape, scrape it gradually and make the edge so thin, less than paper thin. And then what you can do with a reed is you can create your own sound, the nuances of sound, but you need to know what to do. So what happened was all of that, I've made literally thousands of obo reeds. My college career was spent with my wife, who was my girlfriend at that time. If you ask her, where was Alvin in school all the time? I was in the music practice rooms. She was sitting down and I was making reeds my whole musical career. And so what I did was, the principles of making an oboe reed, I applied it acoustically to the ukulele. And so it worked, and so I was so happy. And so right now, uh, Koaloha is basically like an offshoot of an oboe reed. <laughs> so it's like, a, it's, a, it's a unique sound, it's loud, it's beautiful, and right now, we're experimenting with different types of wood, such as mango, uh, uh, acacia, and all these other types of beautiful sounding wood. So, oh, needless to say, we're also, I'm heavy into Engelmann spruce, folks, because um, I found out that despite my absolute love for the koa wood, the grain, the, the beauty, everything else, the sound and all that, I found out that, uh, and my ears don't lie, lie to me, so I found out that Engelman Spruce, the reason why Martin Guitars, Taylor, all the sp Spanish flamenco guitar makers, right, all over the world, there's just one wood that they're going to use for their classical guitars, their excellent instruments, Spruce. Can, may I also comment that recently I played one of your <coughs> mahogany Ukuleles. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I gotta say that sound of the mahogany yeah. has such a great presence, warmth, and a lot of projection as well. Oh yeah. So I'm excited to oh, see yeah. that more and more in the future. Oh yeah, the definitely. sound of the mahogany is just fabulous. Definitely. Right now we're having hint, a hint. Yeah. Hint, no, no, no. <laughs> we're having a I don't know if it's a problem, but it's I think it's called awareness or education. The masses of customers that we come that come to our shop every day uh, like throughout the world everyone is brainwashed into thinking that when you say ukulele automatically they say Hawaii and the wood is koa so uh, unfortunately koa is not as 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 uh, available as pine and all these other woods so th that gives it even more value for the customer and they're not, they're not resistant to paying a higher price for, for the wood. But because of the scarcity factor, we need to start on this program of educating the masses that there are other woods that are available, readily available, and their sound is wow. It's all comparable. It's like just beautiful. It, it comes down to just a matter of taste which type of wood appeals to your senses the best, you know? And so we have a huge job, but we've, we've made, uh, as you can see on this wall, this is a spruce. And uh, 
Can you give me the mango? The, 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 the straight? Yeah. This is an example of a beautiful mango. Mango front, sides, and back. So also the sound, and this has got ebony, ebony front board. Beautiful sound. single uh, craftsman that we have working in there when I walk through the shop I can see that they put their heart and their soul into making and to doing the, with that particular job so it when I walk from the back, top I'm so happy you know that 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 gives me a sense of of like uh, more than satisfaction you know like a, a sense of like wow you know these they, they, they've learned well and they're just carrying on this because actually in anything I don't care if you're making sushi I don't care if you're making donuts I don't care whatever you're doing people are not ignorant you can tell the quality of a product you can almost sense right that wow this person put their heart and soul into this thing you know and then to me that gives it the added value the real value that people are looking for you know uh, uh, just uh, how dedicated how passionate you know it, it was it just made slap together without any feeling at all or you know especially with an ukulele because ukulele ministers to people's hearts and souls and minds you can be frustrated you can be angry with whenever you pick up a uke all those things disappear I was going to mention that and, and you blessed so many people around the world with the sound of your instrument the joy of playing it myself included and it's an honor to be able to share that with people hey, we got mom here where oh what's it come come on, on, come on. On. she's waiting on somebody yeah she's, she's saying hello the, folks hello. this is the founder the true founder of ko aloha ukulele you know and she's the boss the boss no i'm not the boss she is the <laughs> boss <laughs> yeah so ask, ask me if anybody listens in here <laughs> they're all male remember males
as a friend Here we are All together Kani Kapila And good times never end Your love will always be That time will not erase Ahu iho meke aloha Until We have our white labels, mm -hmm. and then under that we have our black labels. Our red labels is uh, right in between our custom and production line. Mm -hmm. So the only, um, well, I guess the main difference from our production and our red labels is we still build everything internally like a custom. Um, aesthetics wise, we upgrade wood, curly uh front binding, uh, upgraded face, rosette, and then also with our front bars and we have our just like that red label right there, um, we have our head plate and a custom logo. So this is a red label? That one That's is not custom? Label. No. Wow. So generally the red labels are going to be at least minimum twice eh, yeah, the value. Just about, yeah, At least. Except one like this looks like it'll be way a lot more. <laughs> yeah, this one is actually uh, built for uh, another customer a while back. Um, that one is actually one of our 20th anniversary bodies. Um, and then they just built the neck, uh, inlay, all the specs to what they wanted. Um, we decided to kind of play with it. So we did a uh, Alaskan bevel. So it's something that we don't normally do, but a uh, small Alaskan bevel. And it's more for playability so that it's not too sharp on the edge as you're playing. Uh, coal, or curly coal face back and sides. Yeah, with a front ebony binding, ebony Alaskan bevel, ebony fretboard head plate, and then we have a pink shell it's actually like a white mother of pearl but has a uh, pink i would say like epoxy finish on top of it and the uh, ebony fretboard with a maple curly maple inlay and then airbrushed uh sakura handmade in hawaii mm -hmm. so just appreciate all the work you guys do it's just gorgeous and thank you thank you it's art and sounds beautiful thank you right on thank you Ukulele is really something that brings people together. It's a really social instrument, it's a social business and I th I'm kind of guessing that people worldwide identify with that because everyone wants a, a place of belonging, you know, something that you can plug into and pretty much just have a good time. So <clears throat> we've seen pockets come, some have kind of slowed down a little bit but it's not to say that it's dead in those places, you know. It, some places it caught on as a fad, but there's still a lot of strong places or pockets throughout the world that support ukulele, love ukulele, the music. And I think part of that appeal is, um, well, the ukulele is an adopted Hawaiian instrument. It's so unassuming that you can pick it up, say, if you're in Finland, and you can play Finnish music. Um, in Japan, you can play Japanese music, you can play pop, you can play rock. Um, we've seen some of the best ukulele music coming from people that aren't playing it traditionally, like how we grew up in fourth grade, you know, with the kupuna coming over and we do our Hawaiian programs, which is great, but you see people expressing it in their own culture as well. And I think that's probably why you see it pop up all over. And it seems to be a lot of growth in Asia and even in Europe right now. I know specifically even Australia is another country I think you guys are seeing a lot of growth. Yeah. Australians, um, Korea, they love ukulele. Um, Koreans love ukulele. 
I think everybody getting really big in China. Everybody too. loves ukulele. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, we already know there's a, a big um, uh, interest in American culture and in, in U.S. particularly mm -hmm. through pop music and ambassadors of ukulele. And in, in recent times, with uh, the last 20 years or so, the brother is making an impact in movies, but uh, also seeing a lot in Europe as well. Right oh yeah, now. yeah. Anyway, thanks again for your time. Is there anything that you'd want to share with uh, the folks out there in the the world of uh, the online world before we say hello? Well, didn't really think about that one, but I guess I should. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for tuning in and spending time with uh, us here at the Koalaha Factory. Uh, we hope that you come down and visit and spend some time with us. We're enjoying our new home here in Kaka'ako. It's a fun place. We work with great people. Um, come and see what's what's so special about this instrument. Here we go. It's too hard. <laughs>